Hey everybody. So in the last video I talked about proc gen and I said that, you know, you have to ask how your proc gen is enriching the player experience. If it's not enriching the player experience, don't do it because it's just an expensive waste of everybody's time, right? I also talked a little bit about Watch Dogs Legion where I said that you can generate all of London. It's a very powerful technical skill, but it doesn't enrich the player experience because nobody cares about any of these people. It just kind of ends up being distracting. But that isn't necessarily how it has to be. Random people can be interesting. And I thought I should talk about one particular way to do that, just to kind of open your mind a little bit. There's plenty of people who can talk about how do you randomly generate maps that are interesting, because there's a million techniques and it's very well explored. But when it comes to generating interesting people, that's not something we talk about a lot. And the times we do talk about it, we tend to talk about it from the perspective of a cool algorithm I found, rather than, <laughs> is this interesting to the player in the slightest? So, let's go ahead and have a nice fantasy discussion where we say, if we were in charge of Watch Dogs Legion, what would we have done? Um, obviously, this is complete fantasy. We're, we're not even pretending that we would have been able to do better. We're just using it as a thought experiment so that we can talk about this particular concept, this kind of proc gen. How would we make our random Londoners more compelling for the player? And the answer is actually really, really straightforward. You make it into a party game. Not like Mario, like Mass Effect. Three people, maybe. Now, why does that make it interesting? Well, it's because who you put on the party determines what the party can do in more ways than you might think, because people will have a certain level of trust for each other, and the trust level of the party is the lowest trust level between any of the people in the party. The more trusting they are, the more laws they're willing to break. So, you know, if you're, if you're a cool hacker lady, and you're, uh, and you're, you know, football player thug, and you're statue man get together, they may not trust each other enough to actually do any of the missions you want to do because like these people, I don't know them. They might betray me. They might, they might do something stupid. They might get caught and then immediately, you know, spill the beans. And it's like, obviously you're not going to break very many laws with those kinds of people in your party. So you gotta find some people that they can trust, recruit their friends, their family members, you have to if you want to do any of the you know, more illegal missions. Moreover, the zones of the city and the factions in the city can also impose a trust penalty based on who's in the party. So if you've got your, your cool hacker lady doing all of her cool hacking stuff in her cool hacking hat or whatever, she might not be willing to do very much hacking in Uptown because you know she kind of has a history there and there's tons of cameras and if she breaks the law there, they're going to know who she is. And they're going to catch her. And that's like, no, 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 I can't do that. So if you want to do missions in Uptown, you're going to have to find a different hacker or put together a team she trusts so much that she's willing to break the law, even though she's a little bit scared. Same with factions, right? She doesn't want to deal with a particular corporation or whatever. This setup allows you to have a very responsive environment of people. As the player is moving through the game world, here's a map of the city, can you tell? As the player is moving through this game world doing stuff, and you know, here, X marks a spot, X marks a spot, ha ha ha, X marks a spot. Yeah, they're going to have to understand who is willing to go to these places, who is willing to break the law that much against these people, and who they can be teamed up with. And the idea here is that you're going to spend a lot of time having to recruit new people just because the old people won't be willing to do highly illegal things in these new locations. I think it's a pretty compelling basic approach, and the idea behind this is that we are taking something that used to be a singular checkbox and we're turning it into a tapestry, we're turning it into a terrain. Obviously, Watch Dogs Legions does have most of these pieces. 
but they're not arranged in a way that actually works. Just like with No Man's Sky, in theory, the gameplay is about using your limited resources to get other resources off of the planets before you run out of air or energy or whatever. But in practice, the planets aren't generated with that in mind. And it's the same with Watch Dogs Legions. The, the pieces are not arranged in a way that creates a compelling rolling action. It's just, oh, here's a little tidbit, here's a little tidbit, here's a little tidbit, I guess we did our job. It's like, no, no. If you want to lure the player into your procedural content, then you have to make sure your procedural content exists within the world in a way that really matters. And this is an easy way to do it. You got I mean, people who might have friends or family that they work best with, but those people might not be the most skilled people. So maybe you go and you look for someone else that might have a better, you know, a better set of friends or family that are more skilled. But these guys are all hacker nerds. They don't really know any any uh, thugs, and therefore they're not going to be willing to break the law with any thugs. Oh my gosh, it's going to take forever to build up their friendship, you know, whatever. This could be a very compelling way to handle this kind of people creation. It's just one little suggestion to kind of show you how I think about these sorts of things. Have a good one.